hi there. I thought I would show you a game called The Campaigns of 1777. Unusually for me, it's a recently released game. And um, it's uh, from, the I think it's the latest Strategy and Tactics magazine. Uh, and uh, I think it's a great game. I'm still in my first game, um, but it's a, a sort of relatively simple game, uh, but it's very well organised, uh, the design's well laid out. Um, the rules are very clear. Uh, there's some, um, they're not too long, so you've got so it's 16 pages of rules. Um, and uh, um, nicely laid out. Um, quite clear and uh, there are one or two at least um, uh, slight ambiguities that um, aren't covered in the rules so for example such things as you have a uh, supply trains um, and um, armies can feed off them but I'm not sure if two armies could feed off the same one and which would use it up um, so things like that so uh, I think, um, but it's that there's, it, you know, that's to be expected um, in a, a minimal word count that you can have with this sort of thing. So, um, yeah, so it's not like a huge big game where it can be quite difficult to wield all the parts together. But even so, I um, I do appreciate the uh, the sort of clean, crisp design that has gone into it. Now, the situation um, is also very interesting and. Uh, um, the the game decisions are interesting despite what on the face of it might seem a, a not so exciting uh campaign situation essentially you have the um the river i don't know uh <laughs> sorry <laughs> hudson river of course i was going to say hudson but yes we go to the hudson here and then we have a different river here or, or perhaps it's a series of rivers. So we've got Lake Champlain here. We have um, Montreal right at the top here. We have um, Lake Ontario here with Fort Oswego. Then we come down Fort Ticonderoga, um, Albany, um, Fort Montgomery, New York, and Philadelphia down here. Boston is here. I'm reading a book about John Revere and his life and times. Very interesting. Newport down here. And uh, there you go. So essentially, um, the aim is for the uh, British um, player to hold. And I'm using these are my markers. Just there are control markers in the game. I'm just using these to make the victory um, conditions even more clearer for me. They must. Uh, the British must have and hold um, Montreal, Fort Ticonderoga, Albany, and um, Fort Montrose, New York, and then. They must have at some point have taken control of Philadelphia. So they don't have to, when they take it, you just flip this counter and that's that victory condition satisfied. These other ones, they have to take and hold them at the end of the game. The game is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten turns long. So that's um, two turns per month from June to October. And um, uh, as you can see, it's uh, point to point. Shall we go in a bit and have a close look at the map very beautifully drawn i believe understand from listening to harold on games that it's the same um artist as did harold's liberty or death um coin game um and on the uh, we had so okay so the squares are um countrysides um Triangles are forts and circles are towns or cities. Um, and then in between them we have connectors which are either regular overland by um, water or overland rough. And so essentially rough is sort of a bit slightly slower moving. Depending. You have to start next to it to go through it. I think there's one other type. But anyway, um, so we have those. And uh, you can you, some places have, have both. Um, let's see, so here along the Hudson you could go along water or not and uh, if you go along the water then it's a slight disadvantage if you're entering into combat via that. Um, then on the sides of the map we have um, the leader holding boxes so um, essentially you have uh, primary leaders they have their marked colour bands so on the British you have Howe, Clinton, Powell 
who's at Burgoyne and Saint Leger. Um, Saint Leger can be flipped and he becomes. Oh no, that's wrong. I'm talking about um, the white leader on the Patriot side. Um, anyway, so you have those primary leaders and then they can ch uh, take charge of subordinates um, such as Cornwallis, von Knipsen for the Hessians, and so forth. So we, we bung here um, the forces in their command. Um, and uh, the, they have a limit of, say, 11 SPs and 3 artillery, down to 5 SPs and 1 artillery, depending on their rank, their star rank. Um, so uh, you can have, like, here we have um, Brits, Hessians, um, Loyalists, and then also uh, there could be Indians, excuse me, on the um, um, British side, then also you have artillery and then you have supply trains. Supply trains can, can go as trains, in which case you have to be one uh, connection away to, to use it or in your space, or supply depots, which then you leave behind. You can be two connectors away and it has to um, connect to a chain back to a supply centre. Uh, that's a port. Um, this is a port and also it could be a supply centre for the Brits and the Patriots. So you could have... Um, so, for example, here, Shulia, I don't know how you pronounce that, sorry, is it Schuyler? Shul, 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 anyway. Um, so, he's got a supply depot here and a supply depot here, and they go back, um, they can be two hexes away from New Haven. So, that depot is supplied from New Haven, and then that could take us two hexes, but it's just going one at the moment to there. Um, otherwise, um, if this was, say, a supply train and uh, this was not here, he could not trace all the way back to New Haven, but his army could eat that when supplies needed to be checked and that would be removed from the board. Um, now, there is a limit on those supplies, so the British have a limit of... Oh, gosh, I watched that and I've forgotten it now because um, I've been away from this one or two days. But anyway, it's um, there's a fixed limit and I think the Americans have more of those counters um, than the Brits. So, you know, that this supply is a premium. But it's not too much of a headache because especially when you consider the linearity of the track that all the rich cities are, are on, you might come around here as the Brits, and then this is kind of like optional. Do you want to get involved in a Massachusetts and so forth? Um, so it's not too difficult to try to play, but you just have to be careful that you do um, keep keep your line. Um, and 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 so so you can see here the Brits. Um, they'll have to take this, have that as a supply centre, which it actually isn't. So they'll have to get a depot here then say a depot here, a depot here, before they can get Albany, or they can come at it from Fort Oswego. So this is safe, but then once they're on here, they, the, the um, supply, the route line of supply could be interdicted from the side. Um, and uh, so over here, um, we have the uh, Patriots. So of course we have Washington, we have the Shulia chap, um, Green, and and then Smith, and Smith comes in via a random event. So we have random events. I'll get to those in a minute. Um, and then they have their subordinates, Arnold, Stevens, etc., etc. Um, Putnam, Sullivan, Sterling, Heath. Um, these might be names familiar to you all. Um, and uh, then we have boxes for uh, your available supply and your available units. Now I've I've got the units. There's you get they're essentially you know a strength point change, so you've got all the necessary units there, um, and you don't start with out with that many. And I think it's going to be very rare that all of those are going to come out because some can come in from the random events. And then some will come in from rallying. Now, rallying happens, as you're reminded, every other turn normally. Um, but it can also be um, chosen as an option by uh, a leader. And what you do is say, if you ha uh, for every primary leader it is, not the subordinate leaders, so, so neither of these two, but Washington, who, say, is besieging here. I don't think a primary leader... No, primary leader under siege can't um, rally either. But so... 
if Washington's here and say if Howe was here, then uh, Howe could roll a d6 and on a 1 he'll get 1 Tory militia and 1 he'd get 1 Indian strength point and uh, Washington can go for 1 Patriot militia. But if, say, you are in the uh, middle department, um, okay, there's going to be no British Indians, but if you roll a 2 as um, Washington or whomever, Oh, green perhaps, um, then you can get two strength points. So the maximum we actually have is, is here in the Eastern Department. You can get three militia coming on. But as you can see, that's kind of, you know, side theatre. So then you have to get them to where the action is. Um, so interesting decisions there. Um, so uh, what else do we have on the board? We have um, expert leaders holding box. So this is a, a game option where you sort of give a bit more variation to leader abilities, which I'm not actually playing with. So I um, don't really remember how that goes, um, but you can see you can pick one of these essentially. And then once it's picked, so the other fellow won't be having it. Uh, you've got the game turn track, random events. So random events is very neat in that you roll 2d6 and um, it happens every turn um, and if you roll between two and six or in the case of the Patriots two and five then the first random event happens so for the British between two and six you, Brandt is finished you remove Brandt and his activation chip and all Indian strength points stacked with Brandt um, the Indians go to the available but Brandt is gone so now obviously that only happens once so instead of having great big thing and then you roll this and then have to roll again, you then move over to the next So the next time you roll one of these. This is what's going to happen. So this has happened for me. And uh, uh, for the Patriots, Arnold has already been assigned to defend Albany. So he started the game down here and then he got shot over to Albany. Um, and uh, the Polish chap... Um, artillery chap has arrived so the next time we roll two to five the continental congress will show disappointment in shulia and shulia is flipped i mentioned that before and so that primary leader is taken out and he's replaced by gates otherwise if leaders are taken out they get replaced by a generic replacement um okay so time to talk about the leaders no because i didn't finish so we got uh, up there I'll show you primary leader, leadership, point, cast. Can I get that in, in the limited space that I have? <laughs> no, but essentially that's showing you what... A um, uh, quick shout out to um, Stuka Joe. The, these are doing the same thing. So these are... Leaders have a leadership rating and they can spend a number of points in their turn depending on you know their rating to perform various actions. That's in the table. These are completely unnecessary, but they're very nice and they can kind of support you. You can say, OK, I'm going to do that, that, and then that uh, in the turn. And maybe that's the order you want to do them in. Um, then we uh, a big literary map legends. You've got leader escape table. So a leader might be captured if he's left alone or not. You've got the attrition uh, roll table. So you can take one or two points of attrition. Um, each turn if you're out of supply. And then you have the battle and... Um, storm, which is when um, once you're bored with waiting for defenders in a fortress um, under siege to die of attrition, you uh, you will storm it. Um, then we also have here intercept, reinforce, and avoid. So um, that's a thing we've come across many games. Essentially, um, uh, if if he moves into here. This fellow can try to intercept, so it's not his turn, but he can try to intercept. If he does, the success in the battle will be fought there. Or, alternatively, if, if he moves into him, uh, this guy on his out of his turn can try to avoid. And, uh, and then, um, say this fellow moves into here, a battle is about to ensue. Um, this fellow can move, uh, roll to try and reinforce that battle. And then he will, will move into there. Um, the uh, battle and the storming is, is very simple and it's done uh, quite niftily. It's, um, uh, you just add up um, the strength points essentially and then artillery is worth two on attack or three on for each strength point or three on defence or it's not useful in storming um, 
Now it is useful in storming, but not defence in storming. And then there's some extra modifiers for like um, the leaders will add the um, the top rating on the right there, their battle rating. And um, say reg if for every regular and Hessian you get one. If they are also commanded, you get another one. And so you might end up with something like twenty three. Um, out, out of that score and that's the number of d6 you roll so essentially you need 10 d6 and you know then you roll both of those 10 twice and then three more and on every six you get a loss if you don't want to do that and you hear a great sigh of dissatisfaction at what's called the buckets of dice then you do this and this works out the same way I tried it I compared so you, you would be rolling 28 dice, instead you can roll 2d6, on a 7 you get 6. And I compared my rolls with all the dice and then um, roll on here, and, you know, it's, it's coming out of saying he's done the calculations. So completely, uh, you don't have to use lots of dice, but still, you just add up all those points and then make the roll. Um, and uh, then we've got the sequence play and the battle sequence. So the battle sequence just for interceptions, avoids, reinforces. Um, and so forth. So that's everything on here. Oh, it's and then lastly, and quite importantly, C travel track. Now, how um, has an option which uh, no other leader has, which is embark with how. Um, how may embark for C movement with any subordinate leaders and units with SPs up to each leader's rank. It costs his entire leadership rating. So, how's leadership rating is nine. Um, this is his range, um, uh, so um, normally he could choose, say, to do uh, battle planning, um, leadership, coordination, which will give a bonus to if he wants a fellow to reinforce into his space, say, or another space nearby. He could do four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. He could do those three, or he could uh, place supply. Or he could do place supply and do rally. Now, normally rally happens every other turn, but you can choose to do it as well. It's going to cost a lot of leadership. Most leaders will only get to do that and nothing else. But, for example, how and Washington can definitely do that and one, maybe two other things. And place supply is you just plot down a supply depot or supply train. But like I said, those are limited. Um, you can pick one up from somewhere else and replace it where you are if you want. Then there's other things like uh, Indian raids, forced march, activates borders, only the Brits get to do Indian raids, uh, storm a fort, so um, that also costs your entire leadership rating, um, so that's the only thing you're going to do if you're going to do that. And supply raid. Now supply raid is um, quite risky, roll a d6, you, you, you choose a, an SP, and you can only do it into the countryside, the boxes, and on a one or two you can remove a supply unit. On a three you're going to lose your SP that raided, and on a four to six no effect. So that's three leadership points, but sometimes leaders are standing still, not able to do much, maybe waiting for other units to move up and so forth, and that can be worth doing. Another interesting thing, and I say interesting because I kind of I wonder when it's going to happen, is the Indian raid similar to the supply raid um but only on a one on d6 does it have any effect so you have a sixth of a chance of inflicting one sp loss by the engines raiding but a 50 percent chance of losing the raider um and i guess that simulates not just the fact that the engines were wiped out but also perhaps they had a go weren't that successful and left for home and an even number, there's no effect. So this w will effectively reduce the British Indian forces rather than the Patriot forces. So I do question the value of that, but maybe it's a desperation measure, because um, the Indians do have some facility in uh, not so not in storming forts at all, but in normal battles. Um, and uh, yeah, so the militia, the Tories, and the the or loyalists, and the um, Patriot militia, they're sort of worth half as many um, dice as the regulars and um, the Patriot, the pa Patriot guys in in trained up. Um, okay, so uh, how do how does the turn go? Um, 
Oh yeah, yeah. So you know, it looks lovely. Uh, all the pictures and the components are, are very nice. And I was talking about the sea travel, wasn't I? So um, essentially, how he can spend his activation activation. We'll talk about that in a minute. And he will embark. So he embarks and with everything with him. Then the next turn, he's at sea. Turn after that, he's at sea. sea. And then after that, the next turn, he disembarks. And in my game, he's just embarked. Essentially, I thought it was a good idea to bring him to pick up all these um, uh, troops and so forth. No, sorry, I've, I've moved, juggled them about a bit. But there was a fair number of SPs there, some loyalists and so forth. Maybe there were some regulars too. Um, and then march on Boston and then move up. But you can see um, that takes four turns and you've only got ten turns in the game. So he's only going to do that once. And if he does that, that's a, that's a major decision. <laughs> this was the wrong decision. Or if I did this was the right decision, I should have done it right at the beginning of the game. And then he would have landed here. So he'd have embarked, he'd have landed here and uh, could then maybe have a decent effect. But as it is, he's left He left um, New York uh, without a leader. So um, although, uh, well, there's sorry, Cornwallis was here um, guarding Fort Montgomery. And the only way into New York, although you have um, patriots here, or, or may I call them rebels here, um, they the special was that the, the Brits can let go this way, but the Patriots can't go that way. The Brits have command of the um the water crossing there, so the only threat to New York is through here. Cornwallis can't do anything, so he, um, this subordinates can only be activated by a primary leader. So him and Nupson, they were starting out here, heading towards Albany. Cornwallis was holding that. Now Washington's threatening. He can't even command units to come out of here to join him. Um, uh, he, and he can't even move out himself. The best I think he could do is try and avoid, but with a... Well, he's got leadership rating of 8, I guess he could do that. So he could give ground, but he couldn't really help himself much. So Howe left them in the lurch, and really he should have gone for Philadelphia. Just a commentary on my game, there's not going to be enough time to take Philadelphia, so the Brits have already lost. But um, I'm, you know, living and learning. Um, so and this, you know, and this is the interesting, it is showing what, why was, uh, first point, why was Philadelphia an objective? Because if they were trying to cut the north from the south, was it necessary? According to this game, it's not necessary because you don't have to have that at the end of, of the game. So I guess it was a diversion, but it's including the game as a victory condition, just, I guess, because it was stuck in Howe's mind to do it. Um, perhaps without that it's too easy for the Brits to win, I don't know. So, um, uh, so the, the game turn goes, um, you start with that rally, so that's what I mentioned where you check the departments, the primary leaders, and you rally to see if you can get some new supporters in. And they will arrive in, uh, at, um, supplied places like that. Um, then uh, how can do sea travel uh, and then we have a sortie check which is that if there's a siege going on for example here the Brits and um, these uh, militia are being, the militia being besieged in Fort Ticaronderoga they could um, f sortie out so it would just be a regular battle and any survivors will, re will remain being besieged um, so that's an option which obviously keeps the siege honest. You can't just, you've got to keep enough forces in there to keep the the siege um, contained. Then we roll for initiative, and that's interesting. We roll 2d6 each, but according to how many casualties were taken last turn, so say the Brits take, took that many, the Patriots took that many, you add... Yeah, you add your opponents to the roll. So the um, Patriots will add that. So you can, the more casualties you cause your opponent, the more likely you're going to get initiative for the next turn. And then you go into the action phase. Now with, um, oh, and then crucially with the um, initiative, um, you choose a chit. So we have all the leaders' chits, plus we have a supply chit for each side and a random event chit. I, I mean, all the primary leaders' chits. So that's not many. That's 
um, essentially uh, three for the Brits and um, four for um, the um, Patriots with a possible Clinton coming in and Powell perhaps coming in uh, um, um, random events and or something else and then Smith coming in I know Smith's not a primary leader. Okay, he's he's a subordinate. So, so Clinton and Powell can come in for the Brits side, um, depending on events. Um, but anyway, so uh, the leader of the initiative can choose a chit. Um, they take it separate, and that goes first. And it doesn't have to be one of your own shits. So, for example, at the beginning, the Brits were having the initiative, and I kept choosing Washington because he was their best leader of the Patriots with the biggest forces. So I wanted to see what he was going to do before we, um, as the Brits, responded to it. Um, but you could, uh, but you know, crucially, you might want to mobilise one of your uh, primary leaders first. If, and then the rest of the chits go in the cup and that chit chosen is the commander or, I think it has to be a commander rather than, yes, it has to be a commander supply and, and um, And what's the other random event will always be random. So you do the leader who's determined first, and from then on it's chip pull draw. If you get that supply um chip, then your side has to check for supply. So it's at that point that we could have some uh, no supply markers included in the game. Um if uh a fellow is out of supply, you roll for attrition, you're gonna lose one or two SPs maximum. And as I and as I indicated before, you have to have a supply chain from depots to supply centres, or you can eat up a um, um, supply train. Uh, and if you uh, pull a random event chip, you roll on the random events table. The British have been quite lucky; they had two dysentery rolls. They lose one one d six SPs, and the Patriot player chooses where from. So guess what? He hit Cornwallis twice, two turns. Um, running with what's a dysentery poor army so yeah that's the, uh, the, the Washington's about to take um, Fort Montgomery and then then sooner or later New York um, so and that's how you carry on with the game uh, then at the end of the turn you just check to see if someone's won or not and then carry on um, now before I forget because I just noticed it there is you have these markers for um, how C destination. So you choose secretly his destination and uh, you, you put it down there. Uh, your opponent can't see it. So that's good because it means you can't change it even while he's out at C. Um, uh, and yeah, your opponent doesn't know where he's headed to. I very much like that. Um, another thing to note is that high winds, attrition and storms at sea can all affect how well he's at sea. So again, I think I, the next time I play this, Howe's not going to go to sea at all. He's going to march down, take Philadelphia, then march back and protect um, this while he sends other fellows up to take Albany. And Burgoyne, of course, is coming down um, for Ticonderoga. Um... Okay, and so um, I think the last thing to mention is so on, on the leaders that they have their attack value and their defence value, which is uh, essentially dice that you're adding to combat or you know, opportunity. Um, and then also you have this range. Now the range is the range of spaces in which they can affect something. So essentially Washington could uh, activate a leader who's four spaces away. You cannot ever activate, that means move and then consequently combat um, units on their own. They have to have a leader. So there's quite a bit of running around. You, you, I think you need green, or if Washington stays down here, obviously you're not using his benefit up here, but you need a Patriot leader here to, to gather the forces, prepare the defences for Philadelphia and so forth. Um, uh, so it's either a primary or um, it would be a subordinate who is in range. So while Washington has a range of four, Green only has a range of one. So you can see how it goes. Shulia two. How many does Gates have? Gates two. Okay, so they're comparable leaders. Um, St. Clair has two. And 
Then on the Brit side, you have Leisure has one, um, How has four, Burgoyne has two, um, and if Clinton comes in, he has two. Um, so, uh, and then the, by the subordinates instead have um, the activation value. So that is the number of points it will cost to activate them. So, um, for example, Stevens here costs will cost Green four points. Now, Green has seven leadership, so he's going to have to use seven of those to activate Stevens. Now, when Stevens is activated, his seven leadership can do any and all of these things. Um, here's the America table, because this doesn't have the, all the how and the Indian raids. Um, and uh, and at the same time, uh, Green will get to move and do his as well. So, um, uh, is that correct? No, I think that's wrong. Uh, the only the primary leader can do all of this. Yes. So sorry, the primary leaders can activate leaders and, and uh, perform these operations. So the leadership rating for the subordinates is purely for interception, reinforce and avoidance roles. And essentially rolling underneath that number on 2d6. Um, uh, I think essentially that's it. I guess that's long enough for the, uh, like an overview. I think what I'll do now is I, I want to play out a turn. So I'll just play a turn so you can see if you, anyone's interested in, in sort of blow by blow of how it how one plays the actual game. Um, uh, and so there you go. Harold Buchanan's campaigns of 1777. Over and out.